welcome to the next lecture on the complex analysis part C. Today, I will explain all those questions which was asked in the July 2025. Myself, Dr. Harishkar, you can follow my YouTube channel where you can find the complete solution of the CSNet July 2025, such as real analysis, numerical analysis, linear algebra, and many more lecture in this playlist. The part B of the complex analysis question is also available in this playlist. You can follow and subscribe my YouTube channel so that when I upload my next video, you will get the notifications. Now, in this lecture, I will explain to you how you can solve all those questions which was asked in the part C. And you can see all these questions I will explain to you with the help of the shortcut tricks. But make sure students, whenever you are entered in the examination hall, you have maximum one minute time period to solve each of the problems. In this lecture, I will explain you how you can solve with the help of the shortcut tricks. Before I start the video, you can I request you you can like and comment on this video as well. If you are new to my YouTube video, you can subscribe my YouTube channel. Now, the first statement is read the statement very carefully. F is the entire function. So whenever F is the entire function, you always think in your mind either a constant, polynomial, exponential, sine, cosine and so on. Fine. 99 percentage questions are solved with the help of these five counter examples always. For more details, you can watch about my lecture on the entire functions. Fine. That is again the 50 plus question I have solved all with the help of these five examples. Now, you have to take an f is entire function which is not the polynomial. So that first two options are cancelled out. Is it okay? Now you can think about all those functions which are entire whose derivative is my non-zero. Clearly say if I choose f is my e raised to power z, then what is the nth derivative? Nth derivative is again e raised to power z. Then the nth derivative at the point alpha is my e raised to power alpha which can never be zero because alpha belongs to the C. Fine. For all those alpha belongs to the C. And what is the alpha? Alpha may be the one. Alpha may be the one plus iota and so on. So clearly say alpha is a non-empty is the fine statement. Alpha is a finite. A is a finite or not. Now because alpha belongs to the C and C is my uncountable infinite set. Fine any number a plus iota b which is uncountable infinite set where a and b belong to the r so a is a finite set that's a wrong answer fine what is the cardinality of a because it's depending upon the a and b it's the infinite yes it is true it is uncountable yes it is true right answers are one three and four are my right answer of the problem look at this another one Gamma is a function from the 0, 1 to the complex plane such that gamma of t is e raised to power 2 pi iota t. Basically, you can see gamma is the unit circle with the center 0, radius 1. Then your target is to find the integrations. Very, very simple. What I told you, whenever you will see the integration, you always apply the residue theorem. You can find the residue of the functions at its pole. But you can see the function is e raised to power z, e raised to power 1 over z. Clearly say corresponding to e raised to power 1 over z, z is equal to 0 is my essential singularity. Fine. While e raised to power z is my entire function. So your target is to compute the residue of the functions at the point z is equal to 0. The same question, the exactly same question I had explained in my residue PY question. I think it's a second or third question will be there. You can watch this and get the answers again in a reasonable time. How you can find the residue? We all know the residue of the functions is nothing but coefficient of 1 over z. Fine. Now you can expand the series. It is n varies from 0 to infinity z raised to power n over n factorial into n is equal to 0 to infinity 1 over n factorial into z raised to power n. Now your target is to find the coefficient of 1 over z. 
वन ओवर जेड कब बनेगा जब यहाँ पे एन होगा देन इट इज एन प्लस वन फाइन इफ इन द फर्स्ट एक्सप्रेंड इफ इट इज अ जेड देन इन द सेकेंड वन इट मस्ट बी द जेड स्केयर इफ इन द फर्स्ट इट्स अ वन देन इट मस्ट बी द जेड इफ इन द फर्स्ट एक्सप्रेंड इज अ जेड स्केयर देन इट इज अ जेड क्यूब एंड सोन दैट मीन्स इफ इन द लास्ट टर्म इज अ जेड एन देन इट मस्ट बी द जेड ऑफ एन प्लस वन फाइन Now look at the what is the coefficient of the z n one over n factorial and what is the coefficient of the z n plus one n plus one factorial is it okay what is the coefficient of the one is a one and it's a two factorial so the answer will be one over one factorial two factorial plus what is the coefficient of the it's a zero factorial one factorial coefficient of two factorial Three factorial and so on. The last term will be n factorial, n plus one factorial. So the residue is my summation of one over n, n plus one factorial. It is only one over n factorial. Zero is not because it is not the entire functions. What about this? I divided by two. N is my greater than equal to one. If you choose n is equal to one, then this expression becomes two factorial. That is half, which can never be written in the terms of four and where n is my integer. So that means the only right option is four is the right answer of the problem. Okay, look at this next one. Again, the f is entire function. You can choose f is my one, z, e raised to power z, sine of z, cos of z, and so on. Then the first option say. f of z is equal to f of z plus one. Then f is a constant or not? What does it implies? That means f is my periodic function. Fine. If f is periodic function, can you find the period? The period is the difference between them. The period is one. Now clearly say if it is a periodic function, the first option, second option, third option cancel. Fine. Now you can choose f is my Sine of z because sine has a period two pi, so I can choose as a two pi into z. Is it okay? Now we can check what is the value of the f of z plus one. This number will be sine two pi z plus two pi, which is come to be sine of two pi z, which is again as f of z, which satisfied my given conditions. But is it the function constant? The function is my non constant the first option is the wrong answer your target is to find the correct option is it fine now look at the second options it is also equal to z plus iota then the function again is a periodic so can you find the period now if you look about the first two exponent then the period is my one if you look about the first and the third exponent The period is my iota. If you look about the second and the third, the period will be one minus iota. Fine. And clearly say one minus iota is the linear combinations of the one and iota. So can you find the general periods? I can write in the linear combination of a into iota plus b into iota, where a and b are my any complex numbers. Is it okay? Now, what does it means? That means the period is my complete complex plane. Fine. Period is my complete complex plane. What does it means? This implies the f is my periodic on complete C. If f is my periodic on the complete C, that means f is my bounded on the complete C. f is my bounded on the complete c f is my entire function on the complete c that implies by using the leibniz theorem we can say the function is my constant on the complete complex domain c and yes it's a complex is a constant function is the right answer fine now look at the third options f 1 over z has a removable singularity what does the meaning of the removable singularity that means limit at z approaches 0 is my finite number 
find this is the meaning of the given expressions now the given that f is my entire function then we can write the entire functions in terms of the taylor series sorry into z of n an fine if you write in the lorentz series then bn will be zero f is my entire function fine then you can find the value of the f of 1 over z it number will be an divided by z raised to power n now you can take the limit z approach is zero it must be finite but you can see z approach is zero and in this case z is in the denominator so when it will be finite it will be finite only if an is my zero for all n is it okay otherwise it becomes infinity because z approach is zero it becomes infinite this is possible only when an is zero when an is my zero what is the given function an is zero for all n f is my zero which is my constant function yes second option is also the correct option is it okay now look at the last options f is a non constant function you can choose any of the non constant function but you can choose as a non constant function these are the one z so non constant function that means this cancel either you can take as a z or e raised to power z i can choose an as a e raised to power z the f is a non constant then what is the value of the f of 1 over z e raised to power 1 over z and clearly say z is equal to 0 is my essential singularity but it he said it's a pole at z is equal to 0 which is false statement second and third are my right answer of the i hope you can like and comment on this video as well if you are really interested to watch more videos kindly like and comment on the video okay look at this another one d of x collection of all those values of the complex plane that is a unit circle is a open unit circle find f is a bijective map from d of x on to d of x itself this is my bijective map find then which of the following statements are my true limit z approach is 0 fz limit f approach is and then so on. first of all if you look about the first option what does it means limit z approach is 0 f of z does not exist that means it goes to the infinity fine what does it means whenever the limit z plus minus infinity fine or you can say its modulus is infinity what does it means that means z is equal to 0 is my pole ye to matlab hota hai iska definition ka fine now we need to check whether z is equal to 0 is a pole or not is it okay now if you look about this condition what is the value of the fz fz is a part of the d of x and d of x is a collection of all those elements is a 0 to 1 what does it means that means f of z is my bounded functions is it okay so once this is the bounded function it can never be po so that means the first option is the cancel is it okay now whatever the limit of the function fz if the absolute value less than equal to 1 yes because the number is my f of z is less than 1 is the absolute value is less than equal to 1 that's a fine statement now the question is once we can say it's a bounded so the limit must be existence fine or otherwise how you can say its existence or not we will see now how you can prove that what is the limit if you look for the third case limit is my zero fine so let's say limit z approach is zero is my l fine remember f is my bijective also so that means your target is to find what is the limit of the f of zero fine so let's say f of 0 is my non zero otherwise l will be zero fine if f of 0 is my non zero i can say there exist any z in the comp in the domain d of x fine such that f of z is my f of 0 but because f is my bijective that means f is my 1 1 what does it implies z will be zero 
which is contradiction because I chose Z which is my non-zero. So that means Z because F is my one one, whatever the limit of the F Z, it must be F of zero. That means L must be zero. So therefore, limit is my zero. So third option is the right answer. Whenever F Z is zero, that means the limit is my existence. Once the limit is existence, second option is also the correct answer. Is it fine? Now, look at the last options. What does the meaning of the e raised to power iota theta? That is the rotations. Fine. एक और चीज आपके दिमाग में देखो. What is that? This is the unit disc. It is also the unit disc. Which result come in your mind when the mapping are from the unit disc to the unit disc? That is the Schwarz lemma. Fine. And when you can use the Schwarz lemma, when f of zero must be zero. Now, because the function is my holomorphic functions, fine. And the limit is my zero, so that means the function is continuous. That means f of zero is zero. So by using the Schwarz lemma, we can say f of z. What is the absolute value of the f z? It is. It must be, or instead of the, what is the conclusion of the f z? Schwarz lemma is c that where c is those number whose modulus is my plus minus one and clearly say what is the modulus of the e raised to power iota z is a plus one. So by using the Schwarz lemma, yes, there exists a theta such that this rotation mapping exists. Fine. For more detail about the Schwarz lemma, you can watch about my this py question of the Schwarz lemma. Fine, and you will get the easiest way. So the right answer of this problem is two, three, four are the right answer of this problem. You can see, students, all these four questions I had explained you in a very, very simple manner. Let me know in the comment box. Are you really interested to watch more videos? I will upload the linear algebra part C solutions of the July 2025. If you put a comment on the videos. Best of luck, students. I hope you can share this video with your friends. Thank you very much. Happy learning. Always.